but you'll be happy to know that I found out that I it was very easy actually to improve the sound quality by switching the driver from the direct driver to ASIO and I'm using the FL Studio audio device for recording purposes because I had a lot of trouble recording with the ASIO driver. Okay, so I wanted to try and create a couple of instruments now that we actually sort of know how to make this stuff work and it's still going to break from from time to time but it's all still practice i just need to do it regularly and then i hope i grow more confident in making instruments so i made this little th funny thing <laughs> So instrument three was one that I was pretty proud of. It's this sound. What I was trying to do here is play with the store settings. So we have an envelope here and then store. Well, this one is set to the cutoff frequency. Let's see which one it actually was. All right, this one. So this envelope is stored, then linked to the oscillator and then link to the to the transpose. So what you're hearing is the, the the note is actually transposing down. So if I adjust the settings in the envelope, oops. It was just basically trying to see if the envelope could be added to something else other than, say, a filter, for example, which it can, which is really, really cool. I also want to try and make some percussive instruments this episode. I haven't really tried the noise oscillator and playing around with trying to create kick drums or snare drums. So let's open a new file and try just that. Get fork lang in here. There we go. Always on top. See, fork lang is very dominant. Always on top. I want to try and make some percussive instruments because I feel like it. So let's just create a beat. Loop this. Okay, I have everything set up. I have a cup of Barry's tea, courtesy of Mantratronic, next to me. So let's try and do this thing. So I was looking at the default instruments and I was looking at a bass drum specifically. Uh, let's create a new channel duplicate this thing so if you want to use several channels in forklang you want to route the midi to forklang track two and now you're using instrument two so i was looking at this kick drum let's solo it so we have this really basic kick drum and i was trying to figure out how they did this so i was looking at the, the, the patch, it says here that there's a store and this store is set to the gain. So that meant that the original signal was just very too soft and they wanted to boost that a little. Then we have another envelope, which should be for, let's see. I would assume the envelope couldn't be for the distortion, right? It should be for the oscillator, but I don't know for sure. Could an envelope have any effect on a distortion? Is there a practical use for an envelope on a distortion? Let's try and mess around with this, actually. Now I'm curious. That's weird. It seems to be transposing up and then back down. So, is this where it goes up? How does this work? Let's try and get that distortion down a bit see how it affects that well actually let's play it see how it affects the sound <laughs> okay so this is interesting this envelope controls the transpose of this oscillator which is basically the the pitch of the oscillator it ups it the note goes up and then it goes down which is funny because I didn't expect it to do that. I wanted to also see what they edited about this sound because I also think, oh, that's interesting. Oh, so that's where the pitch down comes from. Let's try and recreate this, shall we? So switch back to one. We have an oscillator here. 
So let's try and make it without the gain first. I want to see how low the output actually is if you don't store the gain. So put it on 10, give us some room to work with. We're obviously, we're not going to need this delay. Move that arithmetic down, get a sip of tea. Very, very important step when making instruments. Okay, so this is going to be the envelope for... For what exactly? I think this is going to be the designated envelope for the oscillator. So we would have to set another envelope, store that, set that to the transpose of the oscillator, move it up, and then in the oscillator itself, transpose it down for, say... 18. Now, you'll, if you re remember the patch previously, these aren't the, the settings that it was set to. So this is probably not going to be a very powerful kick. So first, let's let's try and actually make this patch work. Probably going to have to pop this. So what do we get now? Close. Now you're already hearing sort of how this is going to turn into a kick. So let's try and make this sound a little bit more interesting. So phased on its own doesn't seem to do a whole lot. Although I think color is going to do a whole lot. Oh, that's adding a lot of bass. That's, that's a good thing. Okay, so what's shape going to do? So it's, it is giving it a little bit of extra kick. So let's see what it sounds like when we add a distortion to this. It's it's a sort of kick. It's not a very powerful one. <laughs> I want to see if I can make it a little bit more oomphy, I guess. Oh, there it was. <laughs> but still had a very long attack so it wasn't getting the like the first sound of the oscillator it just had a slow attack which basically took all the actual punch away Oh, man. Okay, let me just try something real quick. You know I had to do it. <laughs> That's a lot of fun. Cool. Okay, so I'm not really happy with how this... <laughs> I didn't expect it to do that. Uh, let's... Try and make it a bit more punchy. Let's see if we if we actually add that volume store. If we can actually make it punchier. So store. What was this set to again? This was set to gain, I believe, right? Yeah, there it is. I still have it set to GABA mode. Yeah, let's try it the different waveforms. See how it influences the kick. So it seems that if you want higher frequencies in, in your kick drum, you have to use shape because it seems to add a lot more high frequencies. Like it almost serves as its own distortion. Color really seems to sort of give oomph. Phase also does the same, but in a much like smaller to a much smaller degree. Put a dunk on it. Oh, whoops, I broke the sound. There it is. Oh, did it break again? <laughs> so that's that's all fun, but it's 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 a lot less impressive than that other kick drum that we heard. 
So let's actually see what makes this so much better than our kick drum. Color is all the way over there and shape is way over here. So that makes sense because there's a lot more bass and very few high frequencies in this. Is there anything else that could be contributing to this? No, not really, right? Okay, let, well, let's let's try that in our patch. Color, let's set that all the way over here and at very little shape. So what does it sound like now? Close. I'm guessing that if we mess around with the envelope for a bit, then we should be able to get like a reasonable sound. Oh, okay, there it is. I'm unsure what particular... Was it just that we had to sustain up here for too much? Yeah, that was probably it. Ah, okay. So we actually made our first kick drum. Yahoo! So let's see what the other waveforms sound like. That one is so filthy. Woohoo! Okay, so that was pretty interesting. Let's now reset that kick instrument and try and turn this into a snare. Do you really want to reset the instrument? Yeah! 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 So a snare is going to be a little bit more tricky. I was actually taking a look at this noise oscillator, and it doesn't have a the transpose, which means we can't really transpose this one. So let's actually make it easy for us. And instead of making this a snare drum, let's make it a hi-hat. Instant attack. So what does it sound like now? That was easy. Done. <laughs> I just I was just delaying making this snare beast because I still don't have any idea how to go about this. Okay, let's make that a little less aggressive maybe. <laughs> let's actually make that kick drum somewhat appealing. Oh, of course. I was wondering why this wasn't playing. But we still need to link the output, the MIDI output, to fork lang. Let's set up something like this. So maybe we can use the pulse to make it a bit more distinct from the kick drum. Well, actually, the pulse gets filthy very quickly. It's a very dirty sounding waveform. So let's, instead of making this very bassy, have some high frequencies in here as well. Transpose is already set to this. So let's move these way down. Get that delay out of here. We have no need for that. Well, actually, some kind of like reverb could be cool here. So maybe have a delay set to reverb. And we can get back to these settings later, provided it doesn't sound like absolute shit from the get go. So set up an envelope. Get a store. Set the store to this oscillator transpose. S Get it up like so, maybe even higher, since this is going to be a snare drum. Pop it so the sound should work. Adjust this envelope to set a small a small attack, or no attack, rather. So how do we set this? Is this a release? Well, we need some release. Maybe have like a longer snare. It's just, uh, I don't know. Let's play the sound. Let's see what it sounds like now. Oh, wait, uh, did we actually forget to set up the store? Oh, we need... That's interesting. <laughs> what did we do? <laughs> I have no idea what I'm doing. Alright, let's actually clear that out. Zeg even hoi in de microfoon. This sounds more like something that would be a kick drum, right? Let's actually try and make it a little bit more snare-like.
we need to. Uh, I, I wonder how we can make this sound a bit, a little bit more snare like. Maybe add a filter, and just only get more of the mid and highs. Maybe if we try and make the the kick a little bit more accommodating to the snare, then it would sound a bit more whole. Yeah, I'm lost for now. Let's try and move on. Keep the momentum going. Make another instrument. Link that to four clang. Also, we should have probably been saving, but I don't see this turning into a track. So let's play. Dan let's get dangerous. Let's try and make this uh. Like a multi oscillator bass line. Let's move this way down. Give us plenty of room to work with. Delay can go for now. Get rid of this arithmetic. Get copy this oscillator. Paste that three times. So let's get a try and saw. Make one of these play a bit higher. But have it play way softer. Maybe sharper this one is the bassy one so let's get that here and we'll want to detune these a little to have them phase a little bit more i don't know if phasing is the correct term for these because we also have the phase sliders which we're going to move slightly and to make this all work we need to get two arithmetics set this one to plus and pop copy this Paste it here. Uh, another arithmetic. And that one needs to be combined. And then pop to get all the signals played together. So I really hope that I'm correct on this. Let's try it out. Nope. Not working. So, so what are we doing? So maybe we need to set this to plus and pop as well. Oh, ugh. what if we just try? Well, I want to have it with. I want to have it with three oscillators. I'm not gonna back down for this uh, instrument. Let's uh, soothe ourselves a little bit with some tea, shall we? I wonder why is this? Why is this not playing? Is it just linked to the wrong instrument? Uh, no, that's just fine. All right. Well, let's get one of these oscillators out there. We can always try and get it back later. Set this to combine and pop. Oh, wait. So maybe the, the, the VST just crashed. So let's try and get that third oscillator back. I think this was the one that was detuned a little bit. To, nya. Have this phase. Nya. Uh, did we do anything with the color? Not on this one yet, I think. Have that shape a little bit like this. Maybe. Do we have some good diversity going here? So how does this sound? Uh, what? Oh, oh, right. <laughs> we still uh, need to fix the sound. Hey, there we go. Had to do it. <laughs> okay, get rid of this silliness. We're working here. Only seriousness is allowed. Okay, so we have, this, this is a, supposed to be the bass line, so it needs to be way lower. It's not really a really interesting instrument is it, so far. Let's try and make this a little bit more bombastic. Uh, I have no idea how, though. Oh, we here's what we could do. We can have a filter and play around with that for a bit. That's pretty cool so far. Okay, this, so this is slowly turning into a thingy. Let's try and get some sort of background melodies going, I guess. So this one is 
bass. So we're up to instrument number five now. Set that output to folk clang. Let's see, BG Mel. Insert mini clip. Take a sip of tea. Uh, what should we make this? Pulse, pulse instruments might be nice. Okay, so I, I want to try... Here's an idea. Let's try and make a sort of sit chip inspired background melody. So what we're going to do is we're going to have an oscillator here that has its own envelope. And then we're going to make a separate oscillator and give that its own envelope. So let's see how we do that. Maybe we need to have this set to combine pop as well. So, either one of these envelopes still seems to have too much control over the other, which is not something that I want. Set this maybe to combine. Let's let's try and figure out where this is going wrong because it's 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 making sound, but the sound isn't making sense to me. It's, it's okay. It's sort of improving. I'm still confused. Ugh, I'm sort of losing track of the sound in my head if this is actually what I wanted to do. It's still not sit like enough, though. I, I it might just be too too hard to emulate. <laughs> Uh, I want to have a store, or like an envelope, on this filter. Okay, well that was fun. I'm gonna save this, uh, and then I'm gonna call it quits. Drink this nice cup of berries tea. I hope you are enjoying these videos. I'm certainly enjoying discovering this tool. And uh, I hope to see you in the next one. Goodbye. <laughs>